Hello, welcome to another episode of Rocky Mountain Gamers. I'm Mark Cameron. And I'm Mel Babbins. And welcome to the show. This is our second show. And we want to start by thanking everybody who tuned into the first show. Um, we really got a warm reception. We know we kind of came out of nowhere. And, and we really appreciate it. Especially everybody in Canada uh, who came out to support Babs. Seriously, guys, I really, really appreciate it. I've heard so much love and support. Um, means a lot, honestly, your feedback, everything. Um, help us keep going for sure. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you very much. We have a lot coming up. We're really excited about all the different things we want to do. So, And we can't do it without you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. A uh, little bit calmer going into this week's show than we were going into last week's show because last week in addition to having our first show and having more technical difficulties and <laughs> things like that we had just games dropping on our heads uh for the 48 hours before our show started uh, not as much of that this week babs uh, absolutely i mean it feels kind of more like the calm before the storm right um bunch of gaming events coming up next week um, everyone's sort of getting prepared. A lot of speculation, a lot of rumors. It, so it's so many rumors. Before the storm. So many rumors. <laughs> um, uh, the the Nintendo rumors are exhausting all on their own. Yeah. Um, but Nintendo Nintendo did make an official announcement. They did finally. We we know the Nintendo Direct E three twenty twenty one date. We know the time. We know how long it's going to be. We're talking June 15th, 9 a.m. Pacific. Um, it's going to be 40 minutes long. 40 minutes. That's a lot of time for games. And they were oddly specific to mention that software focused, Switch software focused. Right. Mostly which, releasing in 2021. Right. Which is, again, oddly specific, again, probably because of all the rumors surrounding hardware stuff right now. Um, and the cool thing about that is they're going to do their traditional treehouse afterwards. So we'll get probably the, you know, the game announcements and then we'll get to watch a bunch of it, which is honestly part of, you know, my favorite. Uh, oh yeah. That's, that's one of the best parts because then you get to see how the games are behaving, how the games are looking and it's just, just really neat. Um, oh. we don't know any of the games they're going to talk about for sure. Uh, my biggest bet right now honestly, is on uh, something on Super Smash because it's been so long since we've had a reveal of a character. Uh, definitely. It feels like that could be uh, something that we see. But I honestly hope that I have no idea what's going to happen. Me to either. me, the best Nintendo E3s are when it just drops out of nowhere and it's spectacular and, uh, and, and they keep dropping the whole presentation. Um, Nintendo E3 drops are my absolute favorite. Uh, I can't wait to see what they come up with. There's I don't not even a lot get... of games for them to clean up. Um, if they if they do some third party stuff, there's a couple of third party games that have been promised that are out there. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Five. Uh, I'm seeing that in my feed a lot. That people want a release date on that. I know I want a release date on that because I'm playing three. But it's just there's there's more unknown than anything else, and that's that's fantastic. Again, there's been a lot of remakes, um, a lot of remasters over the last you know year or two. They took a lot of the Wii U library and brought it to the Switch. Which don't get me wrong, I love that. Um, I want to see some new games, you know, some new games in the series, some new games in the franchises. I want to see some new games. What? And I'm not asking you, you know, for rumors or anything like that. Just from a personal standpoint, what would you like to see uh, announced so, other than Mother 3? Uh, uh, yeah, again, anything in the Mother series is top, top of the line. Um, I would love to see what Monolith Soft is working on right now. Yeah. Um, I, is it going to be, you know, Xenoblade 3? Is it going to be something completely new? I'm not sure, but I would love that. Again, they're, they're my favorites, so I'd love to see that. Um, I want to see something Zelda. You know, is that Breath of the Wild 2? I'm not really sure. You know, I'd like even 
even a remake kind of like wind waker you know something um and i would love to see anything anything at all metroid so is that metroid prime 4 is that the long rumored metroid prime trilogy is it a new 2d metroid yeah that's um, a that's a rumor that i like yeah honestly. anything along those lines i'm all in Every, everything else on top of that is just candy for me um i'm with you on seeing something zelda um tell you what though we haven't had any proper new mario mm. since uh um odyssey that's true we've had the 3d collection we've had the the wii u port of uh 3d world um and then we have golf uh we had tennis but we we really haven't had a proper new mario i'm not expecting them to announce we have a new mario when it's coming out this year or anything of that nature but i would love to see a tease like they did two years ago or three years ago whenever that was with uh breath of the wild 2 i guess that was 2018 right they did with breath of the wild 2 give me something like that for mario absolutely i i still can't believe we have not had an odyssey 2 yeah i thought i thought for sure they'd do with odyssey like they did with galaxy that felt like a like a no-brainer that would have been an easy easy money um could use the same engine um everyone would love it i thought yeah. if nothing else they'd uh release a thing where you were you'd be able to play as luigi through the whole thing yeah some like more they've done with some of the games i thought they'd give something to spice it up you know yeah some um, more dlc or something right right uh what we didn't hear about this week which we were all hoping and the rumors ran rampant was for a hardware announcement um i think both lee and i are tired of talking about a possible nintendo switch pro uh so we're not going to tonight if uh an announcement drops before the show that would be wonderful um but i'm not gonna i'm not gonna count on it at this point no i i'm looking forward to it i think it is a thing um but as to when Nintendo is going to announce the thing, who knows? Yeah, it, that, that's, a, that's a mystery for uh, uh, a few select people. Yes. Bowser and Miyamoto and... <laughs> that's and right. Just, just a couple of people. Um, what is interesting, we have the Nintendo announcement. So that's going to be on June 15th. And on June 13th, it was announced today that Microsoft is having a Microsoft and Bethesda showcase. Yes. What we don't have at all is a Sony showcase. They aren't involved with E3. We knew that was going to be that way. Uh, they are involved with Summer Game Fest on some level. We don't know what level. And there's, there's no indication. They've made no indication there's a state of play coming up. They just did one. They usually don't do two that close together. Um, obviously, the Horizon Forbidden West uh, state of play looked great. We talked about that last week. Uh, but then we got the disappointing news that God of War isn't happening this year. That's going to be pushed to 2022. And uh, both God of War and uh, Gran Turismo 7 are going to come out on the PlayStation 4 as well as the PlayStation 5. Right. Um, now, I, I almost can't see Sony doing nothing during this whole um, game event. It would be odd. It would be very odd. Um, but also, it's unusual not to have heard anything at this point. Um, like, I can't imagine that Sony is going to be represented strictly through third parties um, and other publishers throughout these events. Well, and they, they, they are a partner uh, for of sure. the Summer Games Showcase. You right. think that means they're going to do something. Well, we're going to see some Sony stuff for sure. Now, or we're going to see some PlayStation stuff for sure. Um, now, whether we actually see some direct Sony stuff during the event, I'm not so sure, but I definitely think in the month of June, we should hear something. 
I would um, think so too. The uh, it, it's worth noting that the um, Summer Game Fest comes out. It, it, it's one day before Ratchet and Clank comes out. Right. So I don't know if they're going to try to hype a game that's one day away. I I don't think so. Um, I, again, they I think we'll see. I think we'll see some ads. Yeah, I'm guessing we'll see ads during Summer Game Fest the same way we do during the Game Awards. Right. I'm thinking we'll see some Ratchet and Clank ads. Right. Definitely. Some, we'll see something probably. Um, yeah, I, I'm not too sure. Again, Sony just published that um, that blog um, with the Q&A from Herman Hulst. And there was a ton of information in there. There was. Uh, nothing concrete, but it did seem like they have a lot to talk about and there's a lot incoming. Um, I feel like maybe they're not just not quite ready to reveal everything yet. Um, but I definitely think they're, they're working hard and they're up to stuff. And I sure hope we see something soon. I hope they're not getting a little lazy because Microsoft hasn't been showing a whole lot. <laughs> well, that's going to change in a week or a week and a half here, right? We, we hope so. We hope so. We hope we're going to have some, uh, concrete like halo information and things of that nature mm -hmm. that would be that would be very very nice i would uh, take that. a halo halo release date would be good yeah that they, would, they've been quiet on that for a long time that would be quite the reveal for their show yeah well the the, the, the last they said was it was going to 2021 right now one reason and i'm hearing a lot of buzz about this these marquee games that were marquee PlayStation 5 games going to PlayStation 4. And there are people who aren't happy about that. Yeah, I'm not sure why. Uh, again, I could kind of see that um, when a developer can focus strictly on next gen, I think there's probably more they could do with the game potentially. Um, whereas if they have to make it compatible for both the PS4 and the PS5, maybe some new advancements are kind of lost there. Um, but then we're, we're talking about Sony here, like, and the developers that are making these games are state of the art, like, and they're taking their time. Again, they delayed God of War. Um, I feel like there's a good chance it's going to play well on the PS4 and on the PS5. And you, you kind of have to expect this a little bit whenever we jump to a new generation. Um, not everybody has a PS5 right now. Not well, and, and that's what, what I don't think some people are understanding about it. There is a massive chip shortage. Big time, yeah. It's, it's not definitely... that Sony doesn't want to make more PS5s to sell. They're making them as fast as they can get chips. Absolutely. Same with Microsoft. Um, we have no idea how it's affecting Nintendo and any possible iterations of the Switch. Um, we're going to talk about graphics cards in a little bit. It's affecting the graphics cards. Yeah, for sure. Um, and one thing I have heard uh, throughout the industry over the last, I'm going to say month, companies are weary about releasing games right now because of the chip shortage. Mm. They're afraid that if they release it, on the past gen system, it won't sell well because people are waiting to buy the next gen system. They're worried that if they release it on the next gen system, it won't sell well because not enough people have the next gen system. And that if they release it on both, they're going to get some flack and it's still not going to sell well. Now, I don't know how legit that is, but these are people who make games. Who I'm hearing that from? Well, not, I mean, that... you know, not journalists, not uh, uh, YouTubers like we are. This is from actual people I know who make games who are nervous about that. Well, I mean, that makes good logical sense to me. I mean, like you said, you released on the PS4, you you lose out on the PS5 next gen stuff. You released on the PS5, what's the install base look like? And you released on both. I mean, you you. Again, the development cycle for that must be much harder. Um, and yeah, you, you lose a little something maybe in that. Um, I get that. Like it, it does make a lot of sense. So again, we're in kind of a strange 
period. Um, and then you uh, like add definitely. in the fact that things are loosening up with the mm -hmm. pandemic. Mm -hmm. And there's a certain fear that definitely during the summer, but maybe into the fall, uh, maybe gamers are going to game a little less because they're just getting back out of their houses. Um, obviously, the hardcore guys game all the time. It's what we do. But the more casual gamers who have been playing a lot of games over the last 16, 18 months might play a little less because they get to go to the bar again. They get to go to the club again. They get to go to the game again. Sounds reasonable to me again. Um, but I still don't think that that's a, you know, necessarily a negative thing for the industry. Um, I think definitely throughout the last 18 months, like you said, um, the industry has grown so much um, and so many, so many more people have either come back to playing games or straight up gotten into games. Um, I feel like that'll probably make up the difference. I think there. so too. Um, and again, like you said, the fall, the winter, I mean, it'd be nice to be able to go out a little more and maybe travel a bit or whatnot. Um, but oh, that's what the switch is for. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it gets, again, that's leaning in towards winter, right? Um, right. I think people probably game. I mean, I game a lot more in the winter because you're inside a little more, right? It gets darker earlier. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we'll have to see how things go, I guess. So, well, so we have Microsoft, we have Sony, we have Nintendo. Um, we know some of what these guys are doing. But uh, just to give a little bit of an overview, if people didn't see the full schedule did release for E3 today, uh, not time specific, but day specific at least. And uh, it's kicking off really on the 12th with uh, Ubisoft uh, and Gearbox Entertainment. In addition to Microsoft, we have the Square Enix on the 13th, uh, as well as the PC Gaming Show, uh, the Future Games Show, and uh, Warner Brothers Games, all on the 13th. On the 14th, uh, Take Two Interactive, we have Capcom. Uh, and in, tele, uh, in television. And then on the 15th, along with Nintendo, we have Bandai Namco uh, doing something. So uh, that's pretty packed. And there's a lot of little companies and a lot of indie companies that are going to be showing intermingled with all of those as well. That's a pretty stellar lineup. That's going to be an exciting few days for sure. Uh, Electronic Arts is, again, not um working with e3 but they are another partner on summer games fest so we're going to see something from ea there and they're doing their ea play uh later on in the month correct I, exactly they're doing their i i don't have a date in front of me but they're doing their ea play as well so uh and then summer game fest there's a few other activities going on uh after their main presentation on the 10th and then they're going to do stuff scattered through the summer right so the, i find it interesting jeff Keeley has basically gone to people and said uh, you're not going to be ready let's hook up and do something special in july let's hook up and do now i don't i don't know who's bit on that if anyone but he's really trying to take control over how companies present to the public um, and giving them some really interesting options. Totally. And I, I'm perfectly fine and happy watching new games be announced all summer long. I oh, can yeah. Every, every day. Down. Or at yeah. least on Wednesday, so we have something to talk about on Thursdays. <laughs> Perfect, right? But I'm selfish. <laughs> um, Jeff Gold, and then and they announced their first celebrity guest for Summer Games Fest today, wow. Jeff Goldblum. Oh, cool. So, so, so we get the tall guy today. Awesome. Uh, how do you feel about the chances of E3 coming back after the pandemic, after it's no longer virtual? I think the chances are looking okay. Um, last year, I, I wouldn't have said that. Um, I felt like things just didn't go very well and um 
again, it was a lot of uncertainty. This year, I feel like they're figuring things out again and getting things going again. And again, the participation, um, the companies that are on board, there's, it looks pretty stacked. Like it looks good. It um, does look good. And I know, I mean, I'm looking forward to getting out and about again. And I think a, a lot of people are. Um, and in fact, I think I've maybe even come to appreciate um, things like conventions a little more. Um, there was a time when the crowds were maybe a bit much for me, but now I don't know. I'm kind of, kind of feeling like, you know, once the, the pandemic is under control and it's not dangerous anymore, like a crowd might be kind of fun um, again. So I, I mean, I was even thinking about console lineups today. Um, when a console used to launch, you know, you, you lined up and you met the coolest people in line, you know, and you played games together, connected somehow. And, uh, and I've, I've sort of started to miss that. So I, I could see E3 coming back in a, in a grand re-entry, you know, in person. And I could see it again. I don't, I don't think now's the time. And I think what they've decided to do as a virtual event is absolutely responsible and, and looks pretty cool and should work really well. Um, it'd be neat to see if they, they go back to full convention style next year, if, if possible. Uh, I agree. I agree. There's a good chance. I think that Summer Game Fest could be the spoiler there. Mm. Well, it definitely feels a bit, I, I don't want to say competitive. Um, oh, you can say competitive. I think that's completely fair. Wait, I'm okay with a bit of competition. Yeah. I mean, Jeff Keighley used to be intimately involved with E3 and he pulled out last year. Um, for whatever reason, I, I don't, you know, I don't know why, but he pulled out last year and he's really pushing this. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Yeah. He feels like a, a man with a vision. Um, he's really turned the game awards into something amazing. Um, yeah, it's, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what, what he does with this this year. I, I sense good things. Yeah. I'm already looking forward to the game awards and they're six months away. <laughs> me too yes just because it, it seems to get better every year oh yes absolutely so well we're going to be watching that stuff close and people should tune in uh i'm going to say friday because i'm still not the fastest editor so i'm going <laughs> to say uh you know we record on thursdays and we uh uh i try to upload i'm going to try to upload on fridays um so tune in next Friday and we will have coverage of Summer Game Fest from Thursday. Yes. Um, faster if I can do it, but <laughs> it, that'll get better. Uh, and um, Lee and I are also going to try to intersperse some content during the weekend, maybe do some mini episodes to cover E3 itself. Uh, particularly if there's really good stuff to cover, we're going to try to jump on and, and talk to you guys about that. So yeah, think, uh, watch our channel for that. Yeah, I think it might be hard to stay quiet. Um, I think so too. So this is a, an excellent outlet for that, for sure. You know I'm a quiet guy, Lee. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing we wanted to talk about today and having to do with the chip shortages, some new graphics cards just dropped. Yeah, so <clears throat> again, they were announced not too long ago. and This week. Yeah, and, and it was basically decided that today would be the day that 3080 Ti um, would be released in multiple ways. 3080, um, 3070. Today, again, I kind of got confused for a bit too. The 3080 was today, and the okay. 3070 they're talking about um, on June 10th. Basically. Got it. So, so a week from now, though, they'll, they'll drop the 3070. Right. And of course, it's been handled interestingly um, throughout Canada and throughout the US. Um, in the US, I know there was a lot more going into stores. Um, I've seen some pictures of some lineups that. Yeah, I'll post a picture. Yeah, some lineups. Um, and of course, here in Canada, it was all online. Um, but man, I'm telling you right now, it just keeps getting harder 
to buy a graphics card. Um, the chip shortages are affecting things. They're affecting PS5s and they're affecting fridges and they're affecting trucks and whatnot. But holy smokes, are they affecting graphics cards? Uh, it's a tough time to want to upgrade your your PC gaming system. As are um, the crypto miners. The crypto miners are are not helping out matters either. Yeah, I, again, there's there's just a massive pile of problems with it right now, um, and and so there were a couple of drops today of graphics cards here in Canada and they were incredibly difficult to obtain. They were gone incredibly rapidly. And again, a lot of, I think a lot of disappointed people. I saw uh, you posting uh, when they popped up at Best Buy for your uh, followers. Yeah. Uh, I, again, I watched and I seen them and it was, it was frustrating, I think for a lot of people and it's been frustrating for a while. Um, and it doesn't feel like it's getting any easier. It, it actually feels no, like it's, it's not. You know, I would usually build my own computer. Uh, I just like to. It's fun. Uh, when I was setting up a computer for our new podcast and for streams and stuff, I hadn't had a desktop in a long time. I've been doing laptops. I haven't built a computer in a while. And I was going to build my own desktop. And there was just no way I would have been delayed. I would have either paid through the nose or been delayed uh, months mm -hmm. to get a graphics card. I had to go with a pre-build. I got incredibly lucky. Yeah, you got I, lucky. I got a pre-build that had an MSI graphics card in it. Uh, and they, they managed to, you know, I managed to catch a builder who had one. So that was nice. So I got a, I got a good card. I got a new uh, good new thirty series card, um, but but there was just no way. If I would have gone to build a computer for the first time ever, it would have been twice as expensive because I'd have had to buy a scalped card. Yeah, I mean, again, I think I think um, the only thing that's going to really solve this uh, situation is just more stock. Um, you could tell the retailers are really trying things. They're they're doing what they can to you know stop bots and um, you know they're they're trying different things. As is but, Nvidia. Nvidia is uh, doing what they can to limit some of these cards' usefulness for crypto miners. That's right. Yeah. I ideally, then you would have less people um, going for the same cards that gamers want, right? To, to right. build. Um, whether that will work or not, I think it's too early to tell. Um, it's something though. Something is better than nothing. So yeah, I'd, hopefully, fingers crossed. I, I know that I know they'd like to lead the, the crypto miners to 30, 90 cards and leave the uh 30, 60, 70, and 80s for the gamers. Yeah. Sincerely. Well, it, it would be nice to see something because again, it is getting frustrating. Um, it's tough, tough to see. And I'd like, I'd like to help more, um, but it's sort of at that point where we just need more stock. Absolutely. But uh, watch, uh, watch Bab's channel here because whenever he, they go up, he, he posts them. And so if you are desperate for a card, it is a good way to get one. When you posted this morning, I jumped on it just to see what was there. And quite a few of those cards were in stock when you posted. They were in stock at least shortly anyway. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Um, that's about all the news we have for today. Uh, I know that we're going to have a lot more coming up, so we, we won't hit you with 40 minute podcasts every time, <laughs> uh, but there may be a few of those. <laughs> Want to ask a favor of our viewers, post in the comments below and let us know what you'd like to hear us talk about. Let us know uh, the subjects you're interested in, because Lee and I, we love it all. We're just, we're just gamers, and uh, we'd like to do that. Um, after E3, we should be having our first guest. I'm not going to tell you who it is, <laughs> but it's somebody cool. And, uh, and we're going to have, have a good time. And if this is your first time checking us out, please do. Uh, hit the like button, hit the follow button, helps us a lot. Uh, one other update, we had a lot of requests 
for an audio version of the podcast. Want to let you know that uh, we have signed up for distribution. It's going to take a few days. Uh, the different channels, uh, Apple, uh, Google, Amazon, they all have to vet you before they'll launch your, your podcast. So the audio versions I'm hoping are up early next week. Um, they have the first episode in their possession now, uh, the one from last week, and they will have this one as soon as it's ready to go live with the video version. So just keep an eye out and, uh, you should be able to get this for your on the go listening soon. Yeah. And I'll, I'll definitely post an update, uh, to my Twitter when, when we have something going, uh, yeah, as will I, yeah, appreciate your patience with this all. Uh, we're figuring things out as well. And your feedback means a lot, honestly. There's a lot of moving parts when you start something like this, uh, a lot more than there even seem to be. So uh, uh, we, we do appreciate you uh, giving us a shot. And uh, lastly, look in this weekend. I, I don't know when. I'm thinking Saturday, maybe Sunday. I am going to post our first game review um video review on youtube and uh that should be fun it'll be the the first first video review i've ever done i've only ever written reviews because i am an old journalist <laughs> so so we have that coming up too um we want to end our it. show every week by talking about what we're playing uh, even if it's the same game we're still trying to beat lee yeah yeah that's on me <laughs> <laughs> so of course i'm still playing fantasian and i made a gross error last last time thinking i was near the end um i don't think i'm near the end anymore <laughs> and uh and actually i couldn't be happier about that in a sense uh i, I love when games do this when they lead up to a big ending and then suddenly, boom, you're like, you're only halfway through. Um, and that's what it feels like, like new worlds opened up, new gameplay mechanics. Um, oh, even the bad. battle music changed, uh, which is a, that's a big favorite of mine. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm couldn't be happier, um, except that uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrade comes out next week so i have a very tight deadline now to finish fantasian um so when i do i'll i'll kind of let you know what the overall experience was but i'll tell you right now i'm, I'm loving it um but final fantasy 7 remake integrate so gotta finish quick now well i'm i'm just finishing up shin megami tensei 3 hd on switch um i really really enjoyed it uh, the story is just phenomenal. That's the game I'll be reviewing this weekend. Awesome. Um, in the, the midst of that, I have played a little bit of Maneater on mm -hmm. Switch, which I think I'm going to try to beat here kind of quick if I can. I'm not sure how long the game is. Um, I waited till the Switch to uh, pick it up, and I'm really enjoying it. It's kind of hilarious. Shark, shark RPG. Shark RPG. Shark, shark PG. PG. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's it's gruesome, messy fun. If you ever played, um, oh, what was the dolphin game on Genesis? Echo. Echo, Echo the, dolphin. the dolphin. If you ever played Echo the dolphin but wanted to eat things, this is a game for you. That sounds like a better play on that for sure. <laughs> so. I've been hitting that a little bit um, and playing more Animal Crossing than I'd like to admit lately. Ooh, uh, I, I have a few weeds to pull in my Animal Crossing village, yeah. I think, right now. Yeah, you go, you go a little bit and those, those do pile up on you. Yeah. I got into setting up all of the Mario stuff I bought. Oh, nice. And so I have like pipes going everywhere and I have blocks hanging out and and it's looking less like an Animal Crossing game and more like a Mario game in a few parts. But so I've just been having some good goofy fun there. <laughs> I think next on deck for me, 
Um, I'm going to finish Spider-Man mm-hmm. on PS5. I did a replay of Spider-Man, uh, and I am sitting there at the last uh, story segment of the main game. Uh, and I haven't played the DLC yet. I didn't play that on PS4. I had it. I just never got to it. So I'm thinking uh, I'd like to finish the story again on PS5, which I really enjoyed playing with the uh, enhanced graphics and uh, just the the load times, the no more subway trips um, was just fantastic. I was going to try to 100% at this time, but there are so many crimes to stop when you get towards the end of the game (laughs) after you've done everything else that I'm kind of passing the crime areas up to go for the story stuff so I can get to the DLC. And uh, and then Ratchet and Clank. Uh, Middle of next week, Ratchet and Clank. I have a feeling that's going to suck away a bunch of my time. Yeah, I think I might have to play that after Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate. Um, It's definitely on my list. It's tough. Like, there's so many good games coming out this month. How in the world am I supposed to play them all? It's it's every month, man. It's every single month. My backlog just grows. Oh yeah, and unfortunately, um, we have real jobs. Anybody want to pay us to actually do this? That would be fantastic. <laughs> we'll play more games for you. I'll stream them. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, I have. Uh, we both have our own day gigs, so yeah, we don't get to play as much as we'd like. One day we'll retire and we'll play through our entire backlog. I, I don't know if I'll have enough years left, man. I'm 54. <laughs> Might have to retire early. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I need to win the lottery. Then I can retire now when I might make it. <laughs> but uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate you taking your time to check us out and to support us. Uh, we have some exciting things coming up. So look forward to those. Uh, Thanks, Lee. As always, it is a pleasure. Thanks, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Honestly, um, this couldn't happen without you. Um, All the feedback, all the love. Thank you so much. And let us know what you want. Yeah, definitely. We would like to make this better. (laughs) This is a family podcast. (laughs) I have kids. (laughs) Got to keep it clean. I am a kid. You got to keep it clean. So uh, that's it for us tonight. We'll catch you in a week and have a great one. Thanks, guys. Take care.